A gorilla mask, yes. Dude put it on while my back was turned and facing the board. I laughed like hell then took it for the day until his parents collected it. Teachers of Reddit, what was the worst thing you had to confiscate from a student? So this was less confiscated and more this student ended up just leaving this in my room and we had to throw it away. But it was certainly weird and is among my favorite things. I have a student this year who has brought some interesting things in. He's in 7th grade, and this is usually beyond the age students play show and tell to begin with. Things included a Russian nesting doll of household items, lunchboxes, crayon bags, a plastic egg, and many things in between. Eight or nine total, leading to a paper with J.O.E. Biden written on it and a jar of other people's hair. He was asking his teachers to add to it. This somehow beats both. Over the course of what feels like a week, this student had been collecting cherry tomatoes at lunch and saving them. Eventually, he had a handful of them. He named each one. He drew a face of each. He had created a family of tomatoes. He even began dressing them in tape created safety seats. Only the children tomatoes, though. He even had a French fry boat for a vehicle to carry his tomato family to each class. Eventually, he left it in our class over weekend, and the tomatoes went bad. We had to toss them. He asked us not to call TPS on him. Tomato Protective Services. I love this kid. Over the course of years, bottle of vodka hidden in the girls' bathroom by 7th graders. How do you know where to look? Everyone who came back from the bathroom was drunk so. You're not as sneaky as you think. Babe, my mom gave it to me for allergies. So, I'll just give it back to her then. Wide eyes. No exclamation. Student banning the primers of 2306 shells together in class. Grab exclamation. I just wanted to see if they would go off. Napalm exclamation. Some kids were into petrol slash gas sniffing but found it hard to transport and keep hidden. So they learned how to make napalm so they could carry it hidden in their bags. I had to lock down the whole school and get hazmat in to dispose of it. And how did they find out how to make it? They asked one of the science teachers and he told them. I got in trouble for looking up how to make napalm in HS freshman year. I actually got caught because a friend told me about the anarchist cook website. I went on it and checked the ingredients because ours wasn't potent enough slash anticlimactic. Got caught by a substitute and was sent to the office where IT scoured who else went on that website. I didn't know what anarchist meant at the time. Lol. During my review, the chemistry teacher asked me what it said. I told him styrofoam and gasoline. Well, did it work? Chem tea not really, was just jelly gasoline that's because you need to double boil it to change the chemical composition more. But with the fumes and an open flame you're asking for travel. The best way is to use a bathtub with the water heater up really high this way there is no flame. Gotta have IT block this website at school. Chem TI got his central detention and had him for chem the next year. Not necessarily the craziest thing to confiscate but the effect that confiscating the item had on the student was pretty upsetting. For background, I am an elementary special education teacher for students with emotional disabilities and intense behaviors. These students have behaviors that range from yelling, throwing things, and leaving the classroom to students who have attempted suicide and students who have assaulted their peers or the school staff. I even had a student go for a cop's gun one time. The student in question was in first grade at the time and fairly low-key compared to some of the other kids I had. This student and I had a good relationship as I was one of the only male staff in the building. He lacked a reliable male figure in his life, and for the majority of his kindergarten year, I was the primary teacher working with him. One day my student had asked to use the restroom, and for most of my students, our staff will escort them to and from the restroom, so I went with him. Now it's been several years, so the details are fuzzy, but somehow it was brought to my attention that there was burnt toilet paper in the boys' restroom. I can't remember if my student or another student told me, but I want to say it was my own student. This sets off some alarms in my head, so I contact my admin team so they're aware. As we're going forward with our day I notice that my student is fidgety and messing with something in their jacket pocket. So I ask them if I can check their pocket, and instead of saying yes, he pulls out a little big lighter and tells me that he found it and asks me to keep it a secret. Of course I can't just turn a blind eye so I report it to my admin team and we sit down with the student to talk about fire safety. We explain how playing with lighters isn't safe and that he could hurt himself or others if he accidentally started a fire that got out of control. My student feels awful. 
He's apologizing and feeling remorseful. He admits to us that he had been messing around with lighters at home when his mom was sleeping. We contacted his mother to tell her what had happened and what he had told us, and her response was, unfortunate. She was furious with us, told us there was no way that he had brought a lighter, and that it must have been planted by a peer, that we coerced a confession out of him, and that she was pulling him out of school immediately. Within a year, the family's house burned down, and my former student was severely burned in the fire. I work in the school system as well and we have a class just like you described. My office, IT, is next to it and I have had to help on occasion. One thing that gets me about these kids is not that they struggle with these behavior issues. It's that they have parents that don't care. Listen to the teacher about what can be done better. My mom has been a primary teacher for her whole life now in the UK and the worst incident she had to deal with was with a girl aged 10 who was having issues with a boy essentially bullying her. She told her dad, and her dad's solution was to give her a sawn-off shotgun to intimidate the boy. No one knew it was unloaded, but the hell it raised when a 10-year-old schoolgirl brings out a shotgun certainly put the boy off from ever coming near her again. Not a teacher, but I'm half-deaf and my music teacher took my hearing aid and refused to accept that it wasn't an earbud. Then he yelled at me for the rest of the class for not playing in tune. Couldn't exactly tell how well I was playing since I could hear it. My mom always told the story about my brother bringing his signed picture of Richard Petty to his class and telling everyone he was his dad, one second grade maybe, but that everyone forgot because the next kid pulled out an antique. When I was in fifth grade, there was an active market in live bees. Some kids figured out that the weight of the average fifth grader briefly stepping on a bee in the grass would stun it for about a minute without actually killing it. They started going out in teams to scout bees on the field, stun them, and carefully scoop them into plastic sandwich bags. They then sell them to other students who'd release them in classrooms to waste class time and scare people. You could get honeybees for 25 cents apiece. Bumblebees and yellow jackets cost more. Teachers and school admins started cracking down on this. Teachers literally confiscated live bees in plastic bags from students when found, and they eventually had to start having someone watch the field to catch students in the act. Edit. A lot of people saying they had something similar and where was this? This was East Bay Area, Northern California. If that sounds like you, it was the elementary school that had the same. Name as the nearby community swimming pool, and the custodian named Fred, whom everyone thought was the best. This was spring of 05 though it may have happened other years too. Not a teacher but I watched quite a funny confiscation. While in detention as a sophomore in high school, I was reading a book just trying to make the time go by when our vice principal, who was monitoring detention that day, stepped out for a moment. All of a sudden I hear a cracking sound and I look up from my book to see a broken egg on the floor. The few kids in the room look around at each other confused. Nobody owns up to it, and nobody knows who did it, because we were all distracted when it happened, thought the vice principal returns, doesn't notice the egg but he's so engrossed in his paperwork that this kid still gets away with throwing another egg. Everyone looks up, the VP asked what that noise was, and this kid holds up a broken pencil and apologizes. Everyone goes back to minding their business, but all the students now know who the culprit is not finally. This kid throws one last egg, but unfortunately the VP looked up from his papers right as he threw it. He walked over to the kid's desk, asked him what he thought he was doing. And the kid goes, just cracking jokes VP holds out his hand and the kid reveals an entire carton of eggs from under his sweatshirt and hands it to him. VP looks so unfazed that I honestly wondered what else that man has seen. I was honestly glad I got detention that day.